familiar setting for physicists, which is actually uh, quantum dynamics in the fermionic system of the lattice. All of these things that you can do if you ever visited where I'm teaching. Okay, so these are my uh, collaborators. This is Mosk Dania from Thailand. This is Jerome Dubai from Nassim. Jean Marie Stefan from Max Planck, still now in New York. And this is uh, um, Nicola Allegra from Santa Barbara. This is also Santa Barbara. So the, 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 the material of this story is based on this paper, which is now published in JSTAT. But you can also uh, see, uh, if you are interested in, in this type of uh, topics, you can also have a look of this special issue of JSTAT, quantum integrability in a moving linear system, which is very recent. Over also of this uh, of this special issue of just that uh, is, a, is a picture which is taken from our from our work without competition. They didn't ask. <laughs> this is how this application. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so uh, just to uh, briefly set up some notation so uh, I mean uh, I will uh, I will uh, I will mainly focus on, uh, on fermionic states so uh, my, my quantum mechanics is based on fermions on the lattice so and, and, and the initial state uh, which uh, I'm interested in you will see all around the world is a state which is made of fermions uh, on, on, a, on a discrete one-dimensional chain. Uh, in general, I can choose whatever subset of, uh, of the real of the of the of the integer number to define my state. And I will actually be interested in a, in a very peculiar state, which I will call domain call initial state later. Uh, well, the problem of quantum dynamics is that you, you, you start with a certain state and then you upgrade the configuration of fermions according to an Hamiltonian and your usual stuff. But this is complicated because you have many particles, right? So if you have many particles, then you follow the time evolution of a, of a, of a, of a certain arbitrary state. It's, it's Of course, this is trivial also because if, if psi naught, which is your initial state, is not an eigenstate of the Hamilton. So, time in quantum mechanics is usually real, okay, in the sense that this evolution operator is unitary. But uh, you might also formally think time as some imaginary uh, uh, number, okay, and exploit the fact that. Uh, some, for example, correlation function, some uh, retarding probability, and you might think to take an analytic definition of time. This also makes sense, and I will show you why this is actually uh, the key point to understand the relation between uh, uh, quantum mechanics, which is formulated in real time, and uh, this problem of lightning curves in statistical mechanics, which is uh, actually formulated in imaginary. Okay, so let me, let me start by uh, understanding the uh, real-time problem. So let, let's, uh, let's see what I will uh, discuss. So essentially, I will, uh, um, I will uh, consider the quantum dynamics which emerge from an initial state. So you have to think for, uh, for, uh, for uh, clarity that the Hamiltonian is a simple excess of so that's the simplest case in which you have fermions that can really only point on the left, on the right, on the left, on the left, on the left. And um, so the idea is that I will, uh, I will uh, start uh, considering as an initial state uh, 
a state which is suffering some problem obtained by joining together to XX uh, when you have a ground state, for example, of the XX speech chain, the open boundary condition. Okay? This ground state, they have different densities, for example, the Fermi level is different on the left and on the right. So, 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 they, so if you want to plot the, the, the density profile at time zero, the density profile is some step function. So that's the density and as a function of x and time to And uh, well, uh, at a certain time t equals zero, okay, I can, uh, I can, for example, uh, uh, join together the, the two speed chains. So essentially, I can uh, evolve this initial state, this one, with, uh, with an Hamiltonian which is fully translational. So it has uh, the missing, so just adding the missing link which was which we connected to the next speech. Okay. So if I do that, then uh, particle they will start to pop from, for example, in that case, left to right. I will have a particle graph. And this density profile will, will smooth and be something like this. Yeah, as time increases. Okay. So there will be some inhomogeneous density profile along the chain, row of X. But the important point, the crucial point, uh, is that uh, uh, so if you take time which is very small, uh, very, from, very far from the contact point, the system is still in its ground state. Okay. So it cannot, the particle cannot, uh, they do not know that uh, uh, the, the chains are, are coming together. So essentially, the dynamics will actually build uh, uh, a light okay. So, they, this, that's, if I plot the density profile in a, in a space-time diagram, what will happen uh, will be that uh, the function law of x in the density will be non-trivial inside a, a light in a sense. Outside the board, the system is frozen the sense that all the correlation functions they are the same as we had in the initial state. Okay. So essentially here the system is still in its uh, original ground state with a fixed density and we are the same. So I'm using this terminology of frozen because it is, uh, it is actually the terminology that is used to uh, start and end uh, what we will okay, see later. Okay, so all right, this is uh, 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 just an observation that then when you draw the density, so suppose I, uh, you take a time slice and, and plot the density profile uh, set up along the chain for a fixed time. So here there is no, there, there are no discontinuity, there are, there are no shock waves. Okay? The density this is interpolating with one of the numbers. Okay? So this shock, they are typical of, uh, let's say, take some Another example of this type of uh, problems that, that was also studied. So, but but for us this is not very important. So you can also think uh, to have uh, different energy profiles. That's, but this is we will have a light one also there. But this is somehow not really related to the statical problem. So another another type of uh, uh, inhomogeneous system. How you get this uh, uh, function rho of x t for this simple problem? So for the free value problem, we are done. Okay. So the, the initial state, as I said, is this one. You have on the left, uh, you prepare a say, the system, the ground state with a certain kf, Fermi, Fermi uh, momentum, which is different. For example, it's higher than pi. And this constant. So, you have a 
represent the density of one, which is larger than one half. And uh, uh, for, on the right, you have the uh, uh, same construction, but the density now is less than one half of n. Right. And then, as I said, at that time equal zero, you, you, you evolve this state that you prepare at time less than zero uh, with an Hamiltonian in which uh, um, somehow uh, contains this missing element. That's a part of the technique of the left right. Uh, and we will actually smooth at this step function, which is this original density. Okay, so that's the Hamiltonian in which we will study this problem. And that's actually the most difficult, well, not really, but somehow one of the most difficult Hamiltonian that we will uh, discuss in this book. And as I said, uh, there is a light here because, the, because of, uh, the particles are, are, are moving freely, so they actually will be a light. And inside this light function, Law of x t is homogeneous is nothing. Okay. Outside everything is fused. So there are many references on this type of uh, problem. The original one was uh, uh, this one, Kim Pantal, Tushus, Kamivsky. I'm sorry, but I forgot because this one from the paper. Um, and then uh, later other people they study the problem of, uh, of uh, um, closely related problems but from directly the looking okay so um, so my so the, the, the idea of, uh, of I mean of how you get this function is actually very simple uh, you start writing the key function for families okay so that's uh, function to destroy a particle, an equal tactic function to destroy a particle in position y and then decay in position x. So there is an output good propagation. And uh, okay, because of uh, uh, translation invariance of the final Hamiltonian, this is a double integral of k and q, which are the domain power to which we fully transform in this guys. Uh, there is the usual time evolution factor, which now is uh, uh, Okay, this is uh, the phase are imaginary, are imaginary number. And F is the uh, is a good trivial function that you have to uh, get, but it's not uh, really, uh, I mean, uh, nothing difficult. It's just the expectation values of this fermion, the, the C, which diagonalize the final Hamiltonian in the initial state, which is this, is this step function. They are the same one. Yes, so they can be. So we will study this also. You can also do it once, but this is enough to pass up to you. Okay, so the important message here is that from the analytic point of view, this function is singular when k is, is equal to two. So here you have a singularity when you put it on the negative side. Okay. It's one over sign k minus two essentially divided by singularity. Okay, so now you want to understand this green function. Uh, notice that if x is equal to y, we, are, we get that, right? So uh, you want to understand this function for a large x, large y, but x over t and y over t fixed, which is what uh, is uh, somehow the, the scaling limit. So that you do this with stationary phase as usual. You look at the phase. Take derivative respect, for example, k is an integral of dq, and you get the stationary phase equation. Okay. So, the stationary phase equation is telling you why you have to expand this double integral to get this meaning contribution for large x and t. And you see that uh, you have to expand if x and t are uh, fixed, the ratio x and t is fixed, you have to expand where the, where the velocity v of k is equal to x over t, which has a simple, very simple physical interpretation because it's telling you that if you want to, if you want to look at your function at x over, well, at x and t in the space-time diagram, 
the particle which uh, is contributing more is the one which has the right velocity to get there and when x is fixed so the velocity is absolutely why is the same? They are the same. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You see, K and Q. But the, the phase are, as, uh, I mean, the, the, the equation are, uh, they are uncoupled. So it's the same. Okay. So essentially, that's the thing. Uh, uh, and, and you can look uh, uh, where the stationary points they are as a function of x over t and then expand this double integral. This, uh,
what is epsilon of k times t minus plus k epsilon. And this special point, which is about, happens to be biological function, find segment of, of Ks, which is also biological. You see? So, when you are at the, 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 this point here, the stationary phase, it, well, the stationary phase that you have to perform goes to the third order of magnitude. And that means that you have a, actually a high function. But pop ups in the phase is a high function. Right? It's a high function. And that's signaled by these uh, uh, nice wiggles that you see at the, at the front. So if you zoom here, you see wiggles. And these wiggles, they are related to the fact that uh, the approximation of the correlation function at this point uh, is uh, an ID care reduction. So when the people who are an ID care, so if you, if you compute your correlation function, at the tip of, uh, of, of the front, here you see that there is some t minus one third behavior times a function which is uh, what the i can. So x is x minus t divided by t to the power of one third. This signals uh, some uh, uh, tracing minimum distribution. So when the, for, the, uh, for the statistic of the right. That for the stationary phase. Okay, now let me go to uh, another point, which is uh, uh, the way in which uh, the problem, which is a real time problem, is mapped to the stack map problem that, that, that will lead us to the IT curves. Okay, so let me start now with a special initial state. The special initial state, I want to call it domain wall initial state. So it's a state in which all the fermions they are on the left. So the occupation number of particles is one on the left and zero on the right. Okay. The fermion they can open with something. So let's see what happens if I apply the Hamiltonian one to this state, which is the domain of well initial state. So what can happen is only the well, the only this particle, which is the one sitting on, on the right, can hold uh, well. The, can open one more. Well, can do this, I mean, just to move up uh, like this, right? Nothing can happen more than this. So if I apply the Hamiltonian twice to this is the main well initial state, you see that what can happen is that the particle moves uh, another step uh, toward the right, or this particle can move to the right, or the same particle, this one can go back to the left. So, if you see, if you follow this, uh, the, 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 well, the, Hamilton, the evolution, you see that uh, if I apply twice the Hamiltonian, there is a, pos there is a probability in roughly one third to get to the initial state. So you can ask the question, what is the retarding probability then? What is the probability that if I start this initial state, if I start to apply many times the Hamiltonian and I go back to this initial state again? So this is clear, all right? From the physical point of view, expand this, I mean, this exponential, you get the series, and then you have uh, to count the probability to go back to the initial state. So what is it actually very nice is that this is a known combinatorial problem, and uh, actually the uh, expectation values of h power n on the domain of initial state is 12 minus 1 double factorial. It's the number of perfect dimensions, because you can map it to a problem of uh, uh, non-intersecting poles between the lines. So you get actually a Gaussian for, uh, for the logic table here at any time. So this Gaussian is exactly at any time. There is no any long time approximation. It's really absolutely exactly at any time. And why this is interesting? Because now you can think to time as an imaginary number can start to think of time as an imaginary number. So if I, if I now think of time as an imaginary number, what I'm really computing here is a partition function of a stack mech model, which is defined on a, a slab of length, two bar actually. So let's take time to the 
much do I earn? So what, what, what I'm really concluding now is a partition function of a stat-like model which is defined as lab of length square. And uh, let's say the, the x direction is a lab, right? It's, it's an infinite. And the, the initial state uh, acts as a boundary condition for the, for the fairness. What the fairness is on the left. And what is actually nice here is that this uh, returning probability, namely alias the partition function, is exponential of r squared. Because if you do this analytic continuation here, you get r squared. So you, you see, it's not infinite. Usually, it's a statement model. I mean, the, the, uh, the free energy is extensive, right? So here, you are already in the continuum limit. So you get some divergence, but actually not. You get something which is depending on the on r squared, the length of this lab. A small is some, uh, uh, well, coefficient. Yes, yes, that's right. It's like some time step defined. Right. Okay, so that means that if you think to this problem, as I said, as a problem of, uh, uh, I mean, of stat mech, of partition function, uh, on a slab, uh, the free energy is dependence of the free energy on R square is telling you that, uh, I mean, something is fluctuating when you cross this boundary condition for the XX chain only inside the region of uh, just dimension R square. We mentioned it's R square. Outside this region, everything is trivial. Uh, everything is frozen. Nothing happened in the case of field that not fluctuate. Light is exactly the same problem. Like when you are outside the light, nothing will happen. Something Side. Right. And then you can play this game now. You can play this formal game. So I can look at the density here in imaginary time. Okay? So I, I, I can play this game now because everything is, uh, is actually the same in, well, can, the problem of getting this density here for the, pro, for the um, system on a finite slab is the same problem uh, of computing the density for Fermi in real time. Right? Discovery at the time, time now is digital. So, look, I start with my initial state, say not, which on the fair is there on the, on the left. I evolve, for example, up to a um, certain time y. So, this distance will be actually, so the center is here, this is minus y, this is r, so this distance is actually r plus y. Then I measure the density, and there I evolve back to my boundary. My, uh, with a Victorian uh, boundary condition at the end of this lab. Okay. So that's the, 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 the density for this imaginary time problem. H is XX, is the usual Victorian. Let's see, I get I, see I plus 1, plus C I get I plus 1, C I, so it's the same Victorian. The only difference with the quantum mechanical problem is this R and the fact that Y is. So look uh, what happens now to the density. So we know that first density was uh, uh, something not trivial inside a light cone, which, which could compute by stationary phase analysis of the point function. Uh, now here uh, is the same problem, but uh, I, the initial state, the time evolution happens to be on a finite domain. So R is the length of this lab. I, I can compute numerically the density, I can evaluate the density, and this is what uh, you find. So the density, the, the density law of x, y now, you see, is not trivial, only inside a, well, a circle, actually. So outside this circle, the system is uh, frozen. Uh, outside this circle means that uh, the correlation function here, they looks like uh, they are completely trivial, actually. They are the one of the state that go the fermion in, uh, in one fermion of the lattice size. It's not completely trivial correlation from the outside. So this is the boundary condition of R. So the density is not trivial only inside the circle. And you can compute the density exactly is the same limit, which I call scale limit x over R, now and y over R, very large, 
by means of stationary phase analysis, we will say afterward this is the same problem that comes in imaginary time that we had in real time. Okay. What then is actually a real problem in this function? This is, a, this is an example so that you see that the function B, uh, is, uh, is not trivial on inside a circle because uh, the argument of one cosine has to be from minus one to one in order to get the real zero. And the result that this is a zero. Then you can also look back to the original problem from a new perspective. Now you can take t equal i to i, i to set to zero. Then you are formally back to quantum mechanics. And what you get from the density is uh, uh, r cosine of x over t, which is the exact result. The domain of an initial state in the x axis shape. Alright, so let me tell you briefly how you can compute this density in imaginary time. So the idea is actually very similar to the one that we exploited in real time. So that's the two point function, two point grid function now, but in imaginary time. So y and y prime is imaginary time. You see the difference here, this factor, which is this. Uh, which are uh, related to the existence of this uh, finite slump, right? And these are the non-trivial ones, because I cannot trivially commute the exponential minus i char with the stagger and seem to kill this factor on the left and the right, because they come with the same sum. So that's the difference between quantum mechanics in real time and quantum mechanics in imaginary time. Okay. So that's actually this non-trivial factor. I cannot just commute them to what they did. Okay, so, um, so the, 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 the point is that uh, there is a I of the if there are okay, so, so the point is that uh, even though this factor is there, you can, uh, you can actually show that the correlation function, I mean, the, 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 you can substitute uh, for C dagger and XY a um, um, Fourier transform. But with a different expression. So the key point here is to show, to simplify that actually this is still a double integral, but with a modified expression. And this modified expression comes with, a, with an R here, because that's the integral, the integral part. And, 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 and with a function epsilon delta of k, which is the Hilbert transform of the dispersion. So essentially, the, the point is that the fact that you have the same sign here uh, um, show up in the, fact, in, the, in, the, in the presence of the Hilbert transform of the dispersion when you try to write a Fourier transform representation for this dagger x y. So that's the only difference, essentially, uh, between the, the, the real time problem and this imaginary time problem. So epsilon k is the Hilbert transform of the dispersion equation. Uh, well, the Hilbert transform has many properties, but uh, um, I don't know. I, you know, the simplest way of understanding it is a, is a, like a, a black box with input a, 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 an expansion of a function in terms of cosine, and it provides an expansion of the same an expansion of the same function in terms of sine. So it's a similar process. A cosine and you get a sine of it. So to get that, so the input transform of, cos, of cosine k is sine k, and the same for our double transform. Okay. So that's that's how it works here. So that's the the, the main technical ingredient that you can prove uh, in a more or less rigorous way, close to nice in, in the this Okay. Uh, so. So you see, this, this is the way in which uh, um, you can show that uh, the light pole transform in a circle when you go to imaginary time. Okay? So there is another circumstance where these circles are fixed, and, and this are the, it's the famous Arctic Circle Theorem. So the Arctic Circle Theorem is formulated in this way. 
was formulated for, uh, originally was formulated for a diverse anastic dialogue, which is this uh, special type of lattice. You cover the lattice with uh, diamonds and you discover that in many, most of the cases, actually basically all of the cases, the orientation of the diamonds is uh, frozen at the corner of the start of the lattice. So here they can be only horizontal, vertical, vertical, and horizontal, and the, 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 the orientation of the diamonds fluctuates on inside a finite region, which turns out to be in the thermodynamic limit class. Okay, so that's the mathematician proof that actually this probability of one orientation of the diamond is frozen outside the uh, right. So why this phenomenology is uh, well, so another circumstance where this iPhone symbol uh, uh, show up is the six vertex model and that's the thing that I will actually discuss now. So uh, with domain over boundary condition. So this the domain over boundary condition for the uh, for the six vertex model of, of, the, of, the, of the square lattice and where it draw this uh, long ago by where I've been. And uh, essentially the idea is well to have uh, uh, incoming arrows and outgoing arrows in the system. So what happens is that the system is the, the, the configuration are very constrained and uh, actually if you Run a Monte Carlo uh, simulation. For example, we did that using this code uh, here. Um, um, well, the, 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 vert the, the vertices they are frozen to, to the corners again of this domain of the of the of the square lattice, and they, they, they can fluctuate only inside a, a circle. The, 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 for a, for the free vector case, that equals zero. Six vertex model and A equal B is a really a simple thing. For other cases, there is a conjecture that that again this curve again for delta different from zero, uh, but it's very complicated actually to not to actually even algebraic curve in general. It's a, it's a very complicated curve. This was conjectured by Corum. But I will uh, only speak about the case that equals zero and show you how this type of, uh, how, how you can get simple uh, mapping the problem to a free family one. And using the technology that we uh, discussed for the, for the XX shape. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, very, so where are the fermion, how you can fermionize the model? So look here. So essentially the idea is that we will, uh, Right, uh, diagonal to diagonal transfer matrix for the for the for the for the six vertex model, and we interpret this arrow as a fermion trajectory in space time. The difference between the six vertex model and the x x chain is that time is discrete, whereas in the x x chain time is continuous because of y y is here. Here time is discrete, and that's the only difference essentially. All right, so uh, that's the way in which uh, you, now you have the usual six vertex weights, and now you can fermionize them. So remember, fermions, they are, so fermions, they are variables that they live only on the, on the edges, and I want to interpret uh, the arrows as fermion trajectory. So for example, I'm looking in this direction, this diagonal direction, I, I, will, I will say that if there are two arrows incoming, then, so there is a vertex of type A, essentially, right? I will have a fermion here and a fermion here that, that actually repel each other after. So they, they enter this counter and they repel each other. And then if this happens, I put a vertex of type A. So I will present this amplitude for this process to be A. So that's the thing. So you have uh, two fermions incoming like this and out. Look here, you have no fermions because, uh, well, because of, uh, of the non gramatic group, essentially. So here you have know, only one fermion going in this direction, one fermion here, one fermion going on the down to the right, and one fermion going to the left. These are the only processes which are allowed to fermionize the model. So there's the R matrix, 
which is essentially the scattered outlet, right? You can write it this time, this time, diagonal region. You can write it now in this uh, four dimensional uh, this, uh, inner space of fairness, uh, with lucky sides and these trivial electrons, right? So A is the probability that we are giving an input uh, up, up, again, up, up, again, or down, down, again, and etc. So we can easily write this transfer of the sign matrix this way. And here, let me explain. Now, um, so this is the transfer of matrix R, I, R plus 1. It exacts. Well, xx will be the skinny input. Yes, yeah, so it's my it's the effect. So now uh, let me let me take uh, uh, the condition to we we have a uh, free model which is delta equals zero, a square plus b square minus c square equals zero. Then you can show that this R matrix you can exponentiate. So it's a Gaussian exponential of uh, you see the usual, uh, essentially, uh, Hamiltonian that you get in the x-axis. The only difference is that this is not the, well, the only difference is that the time of the, the, the transfer matrix, which is the evolution operator, is the product of this. So, this, so what, what I mean is that um, you have to, you have to, uh, to, to, to interpret it as the matrix as a, as a, as a exponential of an Hamiltonian, you need to, um, to write the transfer matrix, diagonalize, find these eigenvalues, and then take the log of them. That will be, that, that will be the way to construct the Hamiltonian. Yes? Yes, yes. It's very simple stuff. I mean, very simple. You will see that it's not completely, it's simple, but, uh, yeah, it's uh, right. We are not uh, uh, doing uh, something different, but uh, it's already put in theory. Okay, so that's the that's the transfer matrix that uh, you have for uh, the even and odd uh, lucky sides, and you can write to in these two transfer matrices, which involves in this uh, in this extended model from the diagonal to so diagonal to diagonal transfer matrix. You can write. Uh, an emission transfer matrix D square out of them and diagonalize it. So now it comes the, the very nice point. So the very the, the interesting point is uh, um, how can I generate the domain wall boundary condition? Because I mean so far I have I mean I have fairness in the language, right? What I'm thinking is a full time evolution of fairness, right? I'm not I cannot impose boundary condition time. But I am allowed only to impose boundary condition at fixed time by, by creating a state wheel of fairness, right? So, but, but let me show you how you can build this, how you can build the domain wall uh, boundary condition. So, I start uh, with a, as an initial state, so that's uh, imaginary time t equal y equal to uh, minus r minus n. With all the fairness again on the left. Okay. So that so pictorially, this is my initial state. All the fairness are on the left. I have only T arms, incoming arms, right? All the fairness are on the left. And no fairness on the right. I post the same boundary conditions, so the same in the same state on the top of the screen. All the fairness on the left, no fairness on the right. And then I can build a configuration of arms with this lattice, which is not the, uh, I mean, it's not the six vertex model with domain or boundary condition. But what you see is that uh, because of this special initial state, uh, all the arms here, I mean, uh, all, the, all the lines here uh, have to be thick because that's the only way in which I can. Uh, I can I can, I, can, I can put up emphasis, right? And here there should be empty. So the only, the only point in which I have a degree of, degree of freedom is here. Here. Yeah. 
here. It's the only point in which I can, uh, I'm allowed to change the, the, the thickness of the line. And if you follow the, the, I mean, the picture, you see that uh, you, you are built inside this uh, uh, strip uh, a new lattice, a new square lattice, but uh, in which all the arms here, they are incoming, they are outgoing, they are incoming, and they are outgoing. So that's the domain wall, uh, domain wall uh, boundary conditions that they have to apply to this domain. But, uh, so that's the way in which uh, choosing this special initial state and feminizing the model you can actually write the density inside this region as um, well as an expectation value of uh, some uh, C dagger x, C x greater than to itself at some point. But uh, the point is that the problem is on the street, but the density is not trivial inside the, the aspect, I'm only inside the, uh, this moment of boundary condition. But the problem is on the street, it's here, right? So it's the same problem for the xx chain the stream. The only difference is in here, is the fact that the transfer matrix is not uh, the trivial exponential of an Hamiltonian, but is uh, essentially some more. So essentially you have a more complicated dispersion relation, which comes from the analyzing the transfer matrix and taking the problem of it. Alright. So that's the transfer matrix actually that you can write for this problem. So you see the exponential of something as, as of course, in my perspective, the model is free. This epsilon k is the dispersion, and uh, so the c, c k and c, c plus and c minus they are two species of fermion because the the, the, the model is intrinsically um, so as a, as a, as a the periodicity of two lattice sites, not just one, because the transfer matrix has two. Right, that's right. So the periodicity is two. Okay, so the, yes, 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 yes. You can do because everything is free, so there is a well defined description. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so the, the, the important point is that. Uh, this epsilon k is a complicated function, uh, but it can uh, be simple if we express in terms of one variable kappa, which is a, uh, is a technical remarkable, but it's actually important, which is related to k by this relation k. So, by means of this kappa, essentially, the, this two-point function here, it's uh, basically the same that you get for xx chain, but with really a different dispersion. And the dispersion is this epsilon of kappa. It's kappa of k. It's kappa of k. Yeah, right, right. This is k. This is k. Otherwise, you get something. Epsilon of k of kappa, which is this function. At the very end is an epsilon of kappa, is epsilon of k of kappa. Yes. All right. So, and, okay, so then you, you can try to this, the density is a double integral again, but in this new variable kappa, you can get the stationary phase equation. The stationary phase equation is uh, this one. So, is performed in kappa, not in k. That's why you get this derivative with respect to kappa of k here. But all, all, the, all the other terms they are, they are expressed in the variable kappa, and that's why you get the derivative with respect to kappa. So you can solve this equation. Yes, yes, n capital is half of the total length of one, of this, which is related to some school of the, to the length Okay, so that's the stationary phase equation that you can actually solve for k of kappa, the same. And uh, there will be a function of x and y. In posing that the real part of this function is zero, you get
get a, a article. This is the point in which it's leading, it's leading to, in which uh, this discussionary point they collapse. So this the, 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 the real part of the discussionary points. But you can go further, but because you can actually go to the density here by doing the, the, the discussionary phase analysis. And, uh, and what you get is a function. And this function is uh, uh, the one uh, well, for the density, the one which, uh, I don't know, we found it first for the, for the uh, density inside the arctic sea for on the six vertex model domain of boundary condition at that level z. I don't know if it was the first. Probably. I, I believe that someone found it somewhere else. I don't know. I, I was not able to find it in the Yes, yes. Twisted by 45 degrees of section. Yes. But it's a section the same design, yes. It is the same design. Because the model and the dispersion is the same dispersion. Stationary phase equation is really the same. It's really the same. The, the, there are some details when you write the, the density, but the, the stationary phase equation is the same. They can be mapped as up to one. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's what you want to call it. Six vertex model and then the one thing. All right, so that's the, 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 the result. Let me conclude by some, uh, some, uh, some remarks. So the main point of the goal was to show that uh, this phenomenon of Arctic curves in, uh, in uh, StatMap is tightly related to the problem of uh, time evolution mechanics from a homogeneous initial state by means of analytic continuation of the imaginary model. That, that was the main point of the goal. Somehow, a uh, quantum point of view on this Arctic Sea curve. Okay. Uh, the, the other point is that uh, you can, uh, but I have no time to explain here, is that uh, you can think to uh, render the relationship usual right here. We also had in the other talk before by Jasper. You can also usually interpret the result of a stationary phase calculation for correlation function as something coming from, a, from an action, from a field theory, right? So that's something that you usually do. And for sure, for the real time problem, you can do. So the question is uh, can you do that also for the imaginary time problem? Yes, you can. You can write an action. Which, uh, which produce the correlation function, but this action has to be formulated in a, in a, in a, in a non-trivial uh, background. And this non-trivial background, this non-trivial method, comes from the session of the dispersion relation. It's a Dirac theory in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in a curved space time. The curvature is directly related to the dispersion relation. But I have no time to explain. And you can actually go further and compute the non trivial things in this action. So, another interesting point is uh, if you can formulate an agrodynamics description of this Arctic Sea. So, in this sense, so the real time problem has a natural interpretation as an agrodynamics problem. Because uh, what happens is that you have a cloud of fermions at time t equals zero. You have a cloud of, uh, of fragments like this. So suppose you are taking the domain of all initial states. So all the, this is a semi-classical plane which I have x and k. This is minus pi and pi. So all the fragments they are here, okay, at time equals zero. 
And to get the density, rho of x d, what you can do, and this is justified by slash and phase, you can draw the dispersion here. And this will be the new cloud of fairness. This will be P of k times t. And uh, the dispersion, the, 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 the semi-classical plane, the, the values, they move like this. Right? So n of k, uh, x, and t, which is, the, which is essentially the equation number of, uh, of that momentum k and position x and t is n of k, x, and t, x plus p of k, t, and that is it. So this is, and this is the notion of uh, a simple uh, aerodynamic equation derivative of n of k uh, respect to time, and a simple p of k derivative with respect to x of n of k. That is the loss. So the question is, uh, you can write an aerodynamic equation for the density in the that describe how, how, how actually the density looks like the, the, the RDC. After all, it's a free problem. The only difference is that this P of K will be some complex function that will describe some of the transform. So, I don't know. There are attempts, for example, either uh, by a bar of red, there are you know, famous and by all this. And then, last question is if one can give a meaning, more formal meaning. The, the appearing of the simple transform, which essentially modify the dispersion of the of the fermions. So why, for the for the problem in imaginary time, I can think of the fermion in real time mod the modified dispersion. This modified dispersion is the transform. I don't know. That's all.